Hi, I'm Ishud. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to share a roadmap that I've been following since a long time to become rich in the next 10 years. If you're someone who is dreaming of become financially independent or rich in the next 10 years, then my roadmap will also help you to prepare one. I have divided this video into three sections. The first thing is securities, essentials and dividing your earnings. So these are the three sections. In, in every individual's life, if you can follow these three sections, you can ultimately become rich. But the difficult thing is like following these three sections is something which is not a piece of cake. So you need to be consistent and you need to uh, put a lot of effort in doing it. But anyway, like I will share the way that I'm approaching to become financially independent before my 30. So that is something that I have been following. Of course, it takes time, it might take longer than what I expected. But still, if you can follow this consistently, you can ultimately become rich in the next 10 years. The first thing is like, once after you get a job, you need to focus on securities first. There are three securities that you need to focus on before thinking about getting rich. The first thing is taking health insurance for your family. It is very, very essential because if suddenly a health problem occurs. So all your goals, all your, uh, I can say becoming rich goals and every other financial goals will go to vain because you need to spend a lot of money to the hospitals. You will, you will spend money crazily. So for that, you need to secure your health by taking in health insurance for your family mainly because anyway you're working for a company, your company will provide you some health insurance. At least for two to three lakhs, your company will provide you. Of course, it's good to have your own medical insurance too. But especially for your parents or for your family, you need to take one health insurance. So you will get many group health insurance options. At least take a health insurance of six to seven lakhs so that if anything happened, then ultimately you have this security, like you have a health insurance so you can feel secure. It will not affect your financial goals. This is number one that you need to do. And the second thing is term insurance. Of course, term insurance is not something that will be beneficial for you and you cannot enjoy the benefits of that but still it will give you some protection to your family before thinking about financial goals before taking about uh, before taking risk to re reach your financial goals always it's good to have a term life insurance so it will give a security to your family even when you're not with them so that is essential if you're in your 20s and if you have opted for life or term, in or term insurance of one crore you will easily get them in 700 to 800 per month. Of course, it's something which is very essential because if you take that in 30s, your premiums will almost double and triple. So it's good to take that in early stages of your career. Then the other thing is emergency fund. So emergency fund is something which is the aggregate of six months of your monthly salary, current monthly salary. So it's like if you are earning 30,000 per month. So 13 to 6, 1 lakh 80,000 is something which can be called as emergency fund for you. If anything emergency occurs, you need to spend some money. Then instead of, I can say, taking loans from bank or taking debts from others, you can use that emergency fund. So your first goal before starting any investments or before starting saving money is like taking two insurances, health insurance and term insurance and creating an emergency fund. So what you can do is that I can say for first seven to eight months, try to create that emergency fund. So if you have created that emergency fund of six months salary, try to put that in FD. Uh, FD is not a good investment option, but still you need to save your emergency fund in some place. So I advise to go put it on FDs, fixed deposit. Your bank will provide that. If you are a salary account holder, your bank will provide that option to easily convert your bank balance to FD. Now, you have a term insurance, you have a health insurance for you and your family, you have an emergency fund. If anything emergency happen, you have the emergency fund in your bank account. You can break that FD and you can use it anytime you want. And if anything emergency happens regarding health, you have a health insurance which will cover that cost. And if anything unfortunate thing happen to you, your family will be secured because you have a term insurance. These are the three things, first three things that you need to take care about before thinking about any things. So I have done that, I have secured my family, I have secured myself, I have also created an emergency fund. So these are the things that are basic. So now we are done with securities. Now we need to talk about essentials. So essential things that we need to do or we need to avoid in order to become rich. The first essential is like upskilling. So whatever that you're doing, whatever that you're working on, you need to upskill yourself regularly. Otherwise it is difficult for you to survive in your field and to get good salary hikes. It's always good to be updated with the latest trends and latest technologies and latest in your 
work field. So because that is the only way that you can get more salary and more hikes every year. So it might be job or it might be a freelancing, whatever that you're doing, it's always good to get upskill. It doesn't matter if even you are in 40s or 30s or you are a student, you need to upskill. That is the important thing. That is the only way you can become rich. And the second thing is building multiple income streams. It is something which is very underrated because when you get a job, when people get a job, mostly the majority of the people will think that we have a job and we can enjoy our life, you know, free time is kind of thing. Of course, enjoying your life is important, but having multiple sources of income will really help you. So, and yet there is no one in the world who becomes rich just with a job. So you need, you need that extra income source. Every time it will help you. Even when suddenly you get laid off in your company, when you have an alternate income source, your family will get protected and you will get protected. So that is the reason why you need to have a multiple income sources, at least two income sources, apart from your primary one, try to build other one at least. So I'm, I'm on that. So I do freelancing for that. And sometimes like I do content, but even though like I hardly end through my content skills, but still I believe that in the future, like I will make the most out of it. And the other thing is like I teach courses online. So you might see my Udemy courses and uh, other stuff. So at least having one alternate income source will be really helpful for you. So on the third thing, it is something that you need to avoid, avoid purchasing depreciating assets. So it is something that not everyone will listen to, but still don't jump into purchasing assets which are depreciating. Like let's suppose a car. So you are just one year experience in your job and you thought of like building a car with an EMI. Do you know like for every three to four years, your car will lose 60% of its value mostly. So it is something which is depreciating. So before purchasing those kind of assets, it might be home or it might be a car, ask yourself a question. So would you still survive without that? If you require to travel every day uh, from your home to office through car, because which is very long, then it's okay to purchase a car. But if it's not the case, you travel by your office cab facility or you travel by uh, some metro or some other thing. If you have that uh, facility, then there is no point of purchasing the car because you are spending a lot on EMIs, you are spending a lot on, I can say, servicing your car, and I can say, replacing parts and many other things. So you are, without your involvement, you are losing a lot here and your car value will depreciate over time. So it is what depreciating asset is. And even it applicable, it is applicable to home. So of course, having a dream home is something which is everyone's first dream. Whenever they get a job, they plan to get a new home by taking I can say loan from the bank and paying EMIs. So don't do that. I will come to the point in the next section. But again, like don't fall into the trap of, I can say just because banks are giving you loans, don't fall into the trap because you might see some people. So even though they are earning good, even though they are in 50s, they are still going to their work. They are still, uh, I can say, working hard because they have EMIs. They need to pay their EMIs every month. So if they fail to go to the job, then ultimately it will be difficult for them. So do you think they achieve the financial independence? No. I know many people who are earning decent income every month, but still they're not happy because they have this on their shoulder that they need to pay EMIs every month. That is the hardest feeling that you will get. You will not uh, recognize it, but yeah, once after you enter into tactics, you feel that burden on your shoulder that you have some EMIs to pay every month. You cannot take any risky decisions because your family will get affected to lose your job. So now we are done with securities and essentials. Now the other important aspect is dividing your salary. So we need to divide our monthly salary into four categories. So I follow this 40, 30, 20, 10 rule. So in general, others will follow the other thing. So what is actually this 40, 30, 20, 10? So you need to divide 40% of your, you need to separate 40% of your entire salary for expenses related to EMIs. So let's suppose you have taken an education loan for your education or you taken a home loan or you have any other expenses or debts that you need to clear off every month. So for that separate 40% from your monthly salary. So let's suppose you are earning 1 lakh per month. Your EMIs will not exceed more than 40,000 per month. It is how you need to calculate. So make it the maximum cap of 40%. So if you're earning 1 lakh, your home loan EMI should not be 70,000. So try to make sure your expenses will not cross that. 
and the other 30% is for household expenses let's suppose you are living in a rented house or you are paying electricity bills or you are paying money for your groceries so make sure you separate 30% for them so and the other 20% is for investment so investment is very important that is the best way to become a financially independent in the long run so make sure you allocate 20% of your monthly budget for investments it might be mutual funds or stocks or even for to upskill yourself it is also an investment because if you spend something for things that will help you to earn then ultimately that's an investment it's like if i am a youtuber so having a good camera and a mic is my investment because that will help me to grow in my career. Career. so investing 20% of your entire monthly budget is very much important and if you don't have that first 40% for emis then you can ultimately convert that to investments itself so as long as you are growing in your career then ultimately the burden of emis will go down so you can convert that to investment part so in the last 10% is for entertainment and outings so we all earn because to enjoy our life so there is no point in just earning and working suppose you are earning 1 lakh per month make sure you allocate 10% every month for entertainment it might be going out or it might be having a dinner at restaurant or it might be going to a vacation so allocate 10% every month for that stuff so even if you missed out in one month you can use that in the other month itself so yeah it is how you need to divide you need to separate your monthly budget if you plan this way then ultimately there is no one will stop you from becoming rich in 10 years so thank you for watching this video if you like this video and if you want someone else to know about this video please share this in your network also if you are a new visitor to my channel please subscribe to my channel thank you